So good morning first day. My name is Sébastien. I'm a rock on the internet and this is Adrien Béraud. I'm a ring developer since last July and Adrien since the beginning. Uh, today we will talk about ring, what is ring, how it works basically. And uh, 2017 was a big year for, for us, so we will present the new feature and what we want to do for this, this uh, next year. So what is ring? To define ring, I can, I can say that ring is a free, universal, distributed communication platform which respects privacy. It's a software developed by Savoir Faire Linux, a company in Montreal. Uh, yeah, I know it's a lot of words, but Ring is free because we, we use the GPL li license for the world code and free open source library like uh, GNU TLS, PGC, etc. It's universal because you have clients on every platform like uh, iOS, Android, Linux, uh, Windows, etc. It's distributed because we use peer-to-peer -peer technologies to do that, like OpenDHT. Uh, it's about communication because we use Ring to share files, uh, send text, messages, and do video conferences. Uh, it's a platform because you can use some parts on every project, like the daemon or OpenDHT, and which respect privacy because we do end-to-end -end, end -end encryption and we try to do ring as secure as possible. So let's start for a little de demonstration. So this is the interface on uh, GNOME. And you can do uh, video calls. Like, uh, Uh, it's a little bit black, <laughs> but this is you. <laughs> um, also, you can uh, send text messages, etc. So, how, how it works? First, what is a distributed uh, network? Basically, you have three types of networks. You have applications like Skype, which use a centralized uh, network. You basically have one server which does the authentication and all data pass through. Uh, you have things like Riot, Matrix, or Mastodon, which use decentralized, uh, uh, decentralized network. It's about a federation concept, uh, where some servers are connected to some of us. And you have things like Ring, which use uh, where well, any device is a node on the network, and the network is basically a mesh. Uh, we will present OpenDHT in details in uh, the RTC room in 30 minutes, I think. Uh, so you have OpenDHT, the base for the network. And when you launch Ring for the first time, you will generate uh, RSA key pair. It's basically your account, and it can be self-seen or signed by a CA. And for each device, you will generate a new key pair for your device, and you sign with a previous one. And the Ring ID is basically the fingerprint of your public key is your identifier on the network. So to, to contact another, uh, to contact someone, you, you need to know his fingerprint. But fingerprints are hard to remember. So we designed the name server. It's basically the, a piece to translate ring ID to nicknames. And we store it on a, di uh, on a blockchain but you, you can use your own, uh, you can host your own name server on a database. For example, you just have to answer to a REST API, which is described on the wiki. And it's optional. You can just use a ring ID to, and no, no nicknames, if you want. 
Yeah, so a ring uses uh, two distinct uh, distributed networks to work. So one, one of them is the Ethereum uh, blockchain that is used from name uh, registration. And the other one is OpenDHT. So this is an example of how it works with OpenDHT when you want to reach someone else uh, on the ring network. Uh, so here Alice wants to join Bob. Uh, so Alice will use um, Alice, Alice will use the, the OpenDHT network that we will describe in the RTC room uh, to uh, make. So uh, OpenDHT it's a distributed uh, dictionary. So every member of uh, the, the OpenDHT network will have access to a shared global uh, dictionary. And this global dictionary will be used to exchange information between peers. Uh, all of these packets exchange on OpenDHT are encrypted. Um, so here to join Bob, Alice will make a put on a given key, uh, a key that is uh, derived from Bob's public key. And Bob will uh, make a listen operation on that key. So this listen operation means that Bob will be informed of any change of value for that key on the distributed uh, dictionary. Uh, yeah, so after Bob received this uh, information, the DHT Bob will reply uh, on the DHT also to Alice. And so what the exchange basically will be their encrypted IP addresses, which are then used to perform a nice negotiation. So a nice negotiation will attempt to establish a direct peer-to-peer -peer connection between Alice and Bob using the uh, IP addresses that were exchanged over the DHT. Um, this ICE negotiation, when it succeeds, uh, then will provide access to a, a direct peer-to-peer -peer, uh, connection, or it might file back to uh, a, a turn server, for instance, if one is configured, uh, that will relay uh, the connection in case there's no possibility to have a direct peer-to-peer -peer connection, like if both peers are behind a different private network. Uh, once a peer-to-peer -peer connection is established, uh, it, is it is encrypted and authenticated to a DTLS connection. So the DTLS connection, uh, when it is established, is used to, uh, to do pure authentication. So they will exchange their respective certificates. And that will be used to, to check that it is actually the identity that, we're, that we were trying to, to, to reach. Um, and also, obviously, it's, it's used for uh, encryption. And over this DTLS channel, there is a, a classic SIP communication that is used to uh, negotiate the, the call or messages or whatever. Um, and yeah, the result is then we use this peer-to-peer -peer, uh, DTLS connection uh, to make audio video calls, uh, exchange text messages, etc. Uh, we try to make ring as universal as possible, so we build clients that are as easy to use as possible for the general public. Um, we try to make clients as user-friendly as possible. So, uh, As uh, Sebastian mentioned, we have clients for Android, we have a client for Android TV, for iOS now, for Windows, we have a UWP client, and obviously on GNU Linux, and uh, on, uh, also on macOS. Uh, so the demo was between the macOS version and the GNU Linux version which is a GTK. So we just released a new, a new version last week, uh, which, which includes uh, support for iOS. Uh, we recently added support for Android TV. It's a, it works actually pretty well. It's a really a pleasure to use Ring on Android TV. You can like uh, have a Ring in a, in a conference room, a meeting room, and use it. And uh, it's uh, really s seamless. And actually, it's the only communication app available on Android TV. There is no other communication app available on Android TV. Hmm? And uh, we are also uh, in communication with the F-Droid community uh, to keep uh, uh, Ring updated on f -Droid. In this new release, we also added major new features that uh, were missing in Ring. So we added the file transfer support. Uh, we added support for push notifications. So this uh, wasn't this was a challenge because there were um, obviously we want to be fully distributed, and push notifications require uh, some authentication to a, a push server. 
uh, either Google or Apple. Um, so we try to make it to keep the distributed uh, mechanism. We will talk more about it later. Uh, so we added the possibility to have a DHT proxy, so the distributed network uh, running uh, this DHT node. Uh, on every, I mean, every ring instance runs a DHT node by default, but we added the possibility to have to use a, a deported uh, DHT node, so a DHT node running on some other computer. And so every operation on the local DHT node will be proxied to the remote node. And uh, why we want to do that? The reason is that running a DHT node is, is lightweight, but on the long term on a mobile device, it still uses much more resources than just doing nothing because there are many small packets uh, to maintain the connectivity going on. So it keeps the phone on. Uh, it keeps the radio on because it sends and receives packets on a regular basis. So on mobile devices, there, there is a need to uh, to have a DHT node that is not running on the phone itself. And also it was a demand from the community. So because since it's a distributed network, IP addresses are visible on this distributed network. So some people want to uh, hide their IP address. So um, they can run the DHT node maybe on their own server or uh, at their home and configure it on their phone. So uh, when they move around, their IP address is not exposed uh, from their from their phone. And uh, so we uh, massively improved contact management, which uh, was a, an issue in previous uh, ring versions. So we had uh, a lot of features in 2017. First, we had a searching item on the GNOME version. So, up. for example, is a, if I search an essay, you will have a searching item where, when the contact is not found, and then it will transform to another thing. Uh, after that, you can add, add the contact or just send a message. And it, it will be automatically added to your list. list. Um, we worked on a common database for all clients, so we can, in the future, synchronize all clients, history, uh, contacts, etc. And we had a, a lot of bugs on uh, contact duplication before that. Uh, we also had the ability to change passwords. Um, the problem with ring, fine, it's not a problem, but when you generate an account, you will have a targz encrypted by your password, and you can change this password. Uh, in Ring, you do, don't have any possibility to recover a password. You, d you don't have a server to contact for, I forget my password. It's just an encrypted file on your device. But now you can change the password <laughs> on the device. Uh, we also had the hardware acceleration support on uh, Mac OS and Linux, I think. Uh, and well, well, this is the schema of the database, and this is the, the searching item. Uh, in December, we had the possibility to share files. Before that, for sharing a video or an image, you you had to call your contact and share the, the file, but your contact can, couldn't uh, save the file. So now we use a TCP over uh, turnover TCP connection to do file sharing, but in the future we need a peer-to-peer -peer implementation like a torrent or something like that. Uh, uh, like Adrian said, we had the possibility to use another node on the network to to do the listen on the DHT. Your your node on your device will just decrypt the value on the DHT and uh, pull the proxy to retrieve the, the value. Uh, it avoids the synchronization on the device and save battery and uh, data con consumption. And yeah, me messages are still decrypted by the device because you uh, just your device have the correct key to decrypt it. Oops. 
Uh, we also add the patch notification support with the proxy. Uh, the problem with that is you have a push provider from your device vendor, like uh, FCM for Android and APN for, your, for Apple. And you need authentication. So basically, you need a key or a password. And this is stored on a server. So we stored this information on a patch, patch gateway hosted by Savoir Linux. And your OpenDHT node will just use the gateway to send notification. But you, you need a central point to use patch notification. And the thing is, for Apple, for example, you can't have an application in background uh, H24. So you need something to wake up your, your daemon. And that's why we, we implement it. So what we want to do in 2018, uh, we have a lot of ideas. We want to improve the uh, auto-video auto quality algorithm. For now, we just use network packet loss, but we, we can use the feedback for, uh, provided by RTCP or RTSP. Uh, we need a peer-to-peer -peer implementation for tr file transferring. Uh, we need to connect ring to other te technologies like the telepathic client. Uh, we need to connect ring to matrix as well as possible, like uh, the XMPP bridge. Uh, and we need to, to do a WebRTC client to have directly a ring in your browser, for example, like uh, Pharmatalk. <laughs> um, and we need to improve the uh, community aspect of ring. We, add a we have a community which does the packaging, uh, the translation, building scripts, uh, support on the mailing list or on the tulip, uh, testing open uh, bugs, uh, open tickets. Uh, we also have one, uh, one guy who, who makes a um, mock-up for, for the design of the GNU Linux uh, client. And somebody asked us if he can do the security ver verification. So, uh, we have a pretty active mailing list, ISC channel on Freenode and uh, Tulip for uh, ticket tracking, book tracking. And we want to participate to the Google Summer of Code this year with uh, previous ideas. So thank you. If you have any questions, uh, you can download the ring uh, with your instruction on the website. And uh, this is um, technical information about rings. Thanks. Does a ring have a? Uh, does it work without a connection to the internet? This local peer discovery or something that makes it work. Uh, in fact, you you can have a bootstrap yes. on your local network and use ring without any con connection, just uh, on a local network. It will work. Okay. It will work. And another question. Um, uh, why? Why didn't you use a name coin? Uh, yeah, so just uh, about your first question. Yeah, so Ring was designed to be able to work on a local network or on a private network, uh, even with multiple layers of uh, private networks in it. Um, yeah, and we didn't use name coin. Uh, well, when we, uh, when we designed the, the, the name service, uh, it just felt like Ethereum provides more flexibility to uh, evolve uh, later, uh, yeah, basically. And I think Namecoin was uh, created before Ethereum, uh, and 
I think Ethereum yeah, provides more flexibility to write uh, custom rules about how to handle names and etc. Oh, okay. Can you share one identity between various devices? Yeah, yeah, you can. Uh, I, I've got an account uh, on my uh, Linux client and my Android one, and it works. Okay, thanks. Yeah, uh, so there was, it was like the third slide which show how it works. So basically we have a, a, an account certificate that will sign device certificates. So when you connect on a new device, it will sign a new certificate for this device, and the device will authenticate, and accounts will authenticate each other by their certificate chain using a standard uh, certificate chain uh, verifications. Uh, just a quick one about the Namecoin issue. Also, if you look online, there was another project, I forget which one, which evaluated Namecoin and found that it was actually suffering from a 50%, 51% attack at the time. Um, uh, so that might be another reason not to consider it. But also, um, have you considered using OpenNIC, uh, especially on those platforms where you can have some control over the DNS servers? Uh, you could actually provide a completely free uh, means of getting an identifier might be something to look at in the future. Yeah, definitely. So actually the name, the way we, the, the way Ring communicates with the blockchain is through a REST API. So the blockchain could be easily replaced to connect with any existing uh, name user directory. So for instance, an organization could connect this name service to its internal uh, user management system, or it could be connected to other services. Uh, you can just have a JSON file on your website and it works for get name name of name of Amarok and just. Um, could you go back to the slide with the DHT like Alice and Bob? Because I think you might have a privacy problem which is kind of the same that we have with, with Tor Onion service and in the previous uh, iteration of the protocol. Uh, no, no, the one with the, the drawing. Um, Yes, so the position of uh, the computer that's going to receive the put and forward the listen call is only uh, determined by the uh, call to, like the device identifier, right? So I can predict uh, which computer I need, which key I need to be in, like which place I need to be in the DHT, and then I can monitor every call that are going to be uh, passed to Bob which might be a privacy concern. Like in Tor, we had to invent this new protocol that is like a shared random identifier that changes every 24 hours. Uh, that is like, a priv like makes it way harder for someone to actually put themselves in the right position with DHT. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, so indeed, uh, protecting the privacy, user's privacy and DHT is, is a real challenge. Uh, so. We, we always consider the DHT itself uh, as, uh, I mean, we, we, don't, we never trust the DHT as is. We, we use it like everything that is uh, put on the DHT is encrypted. Uh, however, it's true that people can use the DHT uh, to observe what's going on. So that they will see encrypted values, but in, it's true that they can uh, use it to infer uh, metadata or this kind of thing. And we still w we are still working on it. Uh, I mean, to my knowledge, there is only Tor that provides a, a very consistent way to hide the IP address, and my, maybe some other uh, similar technologies. So, yeah, we might go toward this uh, in the future. It's still an ongoing uh, research. Uh, hi. Uh, what happens if I send a message to a friend of mine and the friend is offline for the next few hours? How is the message delivered or what feedback do I get? Uh, you, you will see a failed status because the um, message is stored on the DHT five minutes and after that is de deleted. So you need to retry when it's connected. Um, but if I mean, if you try to send a message and the other person is not connected, uh, your device will still try to send it uh, a few times afterward, uh, like um, I think every ten minutes for three times, and then it will set said that it's, it's failed. So yeah.
Um, so I thought from your first explanations that uh, only uh, like uh, I want to talk to you message was sent through the DHT, but from what you've just said, apparently the message, the first message is sent as well uh, through the DHT. The first one. Uh, the, like if I if I say hi to Bob, will hi be sent or I want to talk to you be sent through the DHT? Um, okay, so um, <coughs> if you are uh, so currently, what uh, I mean currently the strategy is that uh, if you just send a message to someone that uh, might you just have in your contact list, it will send an encrypted message over the DHT, and if you have uh, a current call with the person and you send a message, it will use the peer-to-peer -peer connection to send the message. Okay, so technically, if later in the future my RSA key is lost or broken or something, the first message of every new, uh, new conversation could be recovered if uh, an history is uh, stored somewhere? Yeah, indeed. Um, like, yeah, um, the messages on the DHT are not uh, forward secure. So indeed, if your uh, RSA key is, uh, is, is, uh, is stolen or anything, uh, messages exchanged over the DHT can be decrypted. So that's also an improvement uh, we're working for the future uh, to have forward secrecy on the DHT. And uh, when, when you have a peer-to-peer -peer connection, it will use uh, TLS um, um, uh, ciphers with, perf uh, with perfect forward secrecy only. Uh, so then your peer-to-peer -peer connection and then every message exchange on it will be uh, perfect world secure. And the reason is we want people, I mean, the, 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 the design is as, as it is right now because we want people to contact each other without a first exchange. Uh, or we want people to be able to send messages even to people that have never reached before. So then don't have the opportunity to uh, exchange a shared secret or this kind of thing. But this design will likely be improved. Uh, yeah. Time is up. Thanks for the presentation. Okay.